Halo Derek. Okay. Yes, Dokter. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think our time has already been fast spent. Uh, we are almost 20 minutes late compared to the time we are supposed to start. Uh, I want our spiritual leader to put, put us before God and we get started for what we have for the day. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, King of Glory, we thank you for this beautiful Saturday morning. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for protection. We thank you that we've been able to make it on this day. Father, we thank you for our lecture, and I thank you for my classmate, King of King, Lord of Lords. Father, thank you for wisdom. Thank you for knowledge, and thank you for understanding. Lord, welcome your presence in this lecture, Lord. Holy Spirit, be our teacher as we learn, Lord. Let everything we are learning be for our help and our good, Lord. Father, we believe you for his plus in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sharon. Thank you for blessing us every time we are having sessions. You're welcome, Dr. Mone. Mm. Now, colleagues, I want us to get started. Uh, maybe before I share with you what I have, I want us to have a recap of what we learned yesterday. You can, somebody can. Hey, Nam, Nam Subuga Esther, mute yourself, please. You know, this is online learning. You have to be very careful, members. Mm, you have to be extremely careful. Uh -huh. I want us to, to share through what we learned yesterday. Asiki Rasul, how are you? Yes, good morning, Dr. Omana, and good morning, yeah. class. I'm fine, doctor. How is Obongi? Obongi is doing fine. OK. Yes. You were there in class yesterday. I show you. So yes, what do you remember? Yes, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Omana. Uh, yesterday, what I can just quickly remember is uh, as we talked as we talked yesterday of monitoring and evaluation, and yes. the, what I can remember is the, what to be monitored. And he went further and said, uh, for us to be able to monitor, we, we monitor the input. The inputs there means whatever you put. It could be money, it could be human resource, maybe to do some other activity. It could be machines that can be hired to do some activity. So those are the things you first monitor. That is the input. So when you put the input, when you monitor the input, you look at the activities. Uh, the activities can be like training, uh, can be seminars, can be innovation, can be construction, can be another project that is uh, being done. And that is also the second thing that you you you, you monitor. And the, the last one, as you monitor, you look at the output. For example, you have put money uh, to do some activity and the activity has been done. Are, we, are you able to achieve what is, the, uh, what is the main goal of you putting that money? For example, if it is put in digging, as the garden being cultivated according to the number, I mean, according to the size of the money. Uh, in that scenario, I may put an example. If it's like a, 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 a what? A mon, a, like going out to the field, you look at the, the number reach in terms of like uh, maybe if it's an outreach, you put money to, to implement uh, some outreaches and the activity has been done. Now you look at how many outreaches were conducted. And if it is a training, like you see how many participants attended the training right from day one, day two. But as you also uh, conducted the training, you look at also uh, uh, the number of those ones in the training. You may find some people may come in day one and the register day two, the register, you find some of the days, they, they are not there, they come on the, last day, on the last day. So in that regard, you find out the number of those ones trained from day one to day two. But as uh, you have said yesterday, uh, as the, as, as you continue doing the activity, you need, to, you need to be monitoring. For example, you cited an example of our class where you say the 
ideally you're supposed to monitor like uh, you've started the lectures you want to see the first people who have started the lectures uh, those ones who log the first then maybe in the middle and then at the end to see uh the consistent of this uh, student uh, performing or attending to the lectures you've, you, 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 you're sharing. Thank you so much. That is what I can remember very fast. And the, those are the things that you need to uh, to monitor when you're doing an M and E. Thank you so much. I do submit. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, I've already seen somebody's hand is up. But I think, uh, colleague, you know I know my class and I always want to know my class better. Uh, so I will call you by name. There's uh, Roy Roromio, but they, there are two Roromio in this class. Am I right or wrong? Doctor, you're right. There are two, Deo and the Roy. Deo was not there yesterday, and today is also not there. Am I right or wrong? No, De uh, Dr. Dale was there yesterday. I saw him in attendance. Are you very sure from the bottom of your heart? <laughs> yes, you check. Let the ask. Uh, Kazero, uh, uh, Derek can confirm. Derek was there yesterday. Let me check the attendance list, sir. Okay. Mm, you check. I saw him. Know. He even wrote his name. Mm. Yeah, he didn't see. Maybe he came and wrote his name and went away. <laughs> Okay, maybe, but I I saw I saw him I saw his name. Oh, when Alex, when Alex, what are you doing in my class? <laughs> eh? No, it's not poisonous. Ah, you are not supposed to be here. <laughs> eh, Alex, me, I want you to come for your master degree. Eh? Have you already applied? No, I'm doing my postgraduate in medical education now. Okay. So when are you coming for master? Hopefully I'm doing it outside the country, hopefully. Hey, you want to do it outside the country? Okay. Okumunoa. Uh, Okumunoa. Hello, Okumonoa, please. Yes, sir. What do you yes, remember sir. from what we learned yesterday? I saw you in class yesterday, but when I wanted you to contribute to it, I could not see you again. <laughs> eh? I was there throughout up to the end, sir. Eh, so what did you pick yesterday? Mm. Well, maybe I'll look at the, the levels of M and E efforts. Mm -hmm. where, um, as we looked at the, the inputs, uh, activities and outputs which are more within the control of the implementer or the mm. project manager, but the, the, the long term results of the project that's the outcome which could be the I would say intermediate or like after two, three years, and then maybe the long term effect or impact of the projects which can be measured 10 years after. That was our one thing that we, 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 we saw. And um, that's why actually we had more of our discussions on if we can have outputs and maybe not have impact at the end of it, but all we saw would depend. And also one thing we realized is uh, monitoring and evaluation cycle. We realized that we can monitor a project right from problem identification to goal and objective settings through designing and implementing plan and implementing and service delivery. Like every time we have to keep monitoring and evaluating the, the, the direction of a project and seeing if we are really moving in the right direction. That's, um, that's at least what I could recap from yesterday. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Noah. Uh, Vicky, can you name yourself properly? Vicky who? What is your other name? Hello, Vicky, name yourself properly. All right, let me do that. Then we have to see McKenneth. To see McKenneth. Yes, doctor, good morning. Plus. Good morning, how are you? Were you there Thank yesterday? You. Yes, I was, doctor. So what do you remember? 
apart um, from what has already been said. Yes, I, I remember that uh, under monitoring, uh, the major areas where monitoring is crucial is uh, through project backstopping, planning, reporting, management, uh, decision making, and allocating resources. Mm -hmm. So we also went ahead to look at how we do mon uh, how we do uh, monitoring. Uh, we looked at field visits, uh, document reviews, uh, reporting, feedback, spot checks, uh, review meetings, and tracking. Uh, where we looked at using phones uh, or gadgets for some projects which require uh, IT and also through observations, uh, targeted field visits uh, and also uh, targeted supervision. Uh, okay. And also we also went ahead and looked at the steps in developing a monitoring <laughs> plan where we looked at uh, making conceptual frameworks uh, making sure that you have uh, indicators that are targeted, also setting goals and objectives before you do the actual activity. That is mm -hmm. what they can remember, sir. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rueza Julius Eddy, can you confirm your presence? Yes. Good morning to you and everyone. Good morning, but your network is too bad. Yes, I... Hello? Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Hello, doctor. Yeah, there Can is you hear me doctor? noise in the background. Oh, maybe it's just, it could be just wind, but um, I mean, I'm back now. Uh, you mute yourself. So what do you remember yesterday? No, you mute no. yourself. I think you are forgiven. Uh, sorry, 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 Eddie. You are. It's okay. Uh, it's okay, doctor. Okay. Sorry about the network. Mm, no, it's okay. You leave eh? because it's making a lot of noise in the background. So, but we appreciate. We appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. Paul Kirumira. Hello, Paul Kirumira. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Romana. How are you? I want to ask you, Paul, if they talk about uh, monitoring, what comes into your mind? What do you think? Just monitoring on what is what what does that one mean? Well, for me, it means monitoring is a uh, um, it's a continuous process. It's a data collection and analysis of of, uh, of 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 that information and do it continuously. That's what comes to my mind from what I remember yesterday. You get this information, you analyze it, you use that information to make um, evidence-based decisions. Then you go back in the same process. You repeat the same process of any project yes, that you are managing. Excellent, excellent, Paul. Excellent. My name is Gumona Amos. Can you add what uh, what Paula said by telling us what evaluation is? Uh, according to me, uh, evaluation is a, actually looking at uh, uh, looking at the the project. Looking at the outcome, let me see. Looking at the outcome of the project, what the project has has done to the community or to to the people that uh, are, are receiving the services in that community. Mm, I'm saying not quite, not quite. You are Kosa coughing. Do you know Kosa coughing? <laughs> <laughs> eh, yeah? mm. saying. Yeah, do you know yes. Kosa coughing? Yeah? No. Kosa coughing means you are not very sure, but you must say something. Yeah? You must say something. I'm sorry to share with you this. There is a brother of mine. 
at some point we used to study the Bible. So we are reading from the book of prophet Jeremiah. So when we go to read the following day, we would start by recapping what we learned the previous day. So when I asked the guy, what do you remember that we learned yesterday? The guy would tell you we learn about destruction. <laughs> the following day you go, you ask the guy, what did you learn yesterday about destruction? Why? Because the book of prophet Jeremiah is about destruction, destruction, destruction only. So the guy was not wrong. Eh? But he was giving a blanket answer. <laughs> was not specific. <laughs> so he was cause coughing. Eh? So sometimes in life, when you are not sure about something and you begin to cause a cough, eh, it's also not good. Hmm? So when you begin to cause a cough, it is not good. I expect you to anyway, we are we are learning, eh? We are learning. Thank you for the attempt. So we'll see through what we have about evaluation. And when we see through, try to meditate about it. Sometimes I also say you can prayerfully meditate about what we have learned so that you don't miss out the point. Bearing in mind that at some point, somebody will ask you. At some point, you will be able to apply. At some point, maybe you will even be examined in this. I get the point. So it is yes. only through that meditational processes that you can be able to make the point stick. Of course, there is nobody who knows all. We are all learning, and learning doesn't end. So we keep on learning, 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 learning. Eh? Some there are some situation where you even require you are required to unlearn certain things in order for you to learn the new ones. Eh? So all those are part of learning processes. Otherwise, thank you so much. Uh, Nambogo Ariet. Hello, my friend Ariet. Yes, Dr. Mona. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Dr. Mona? In addition uh, to that, yes. Uh, monitoring ensures accountability. No, it not monitoring, evaluation. Evaluation. Oh, evaluation. Mm. Evaluation is. Uh, is a, a periodic assessment mm -hmm. of projects assessment, of projects relevance mm -hmm. uh, to check on efficiency, is it economical? Uh, and then impacts, whether short or, or long term results, and then effectiveness, extent of achieving a program's results. Mm -hmm. Good, you have the point. You have the point, maybe you just need to reorganize it in a more efficient and effective way, but the point is there. Yeah, uh, and it's carried out, out after an interval of time that verifies program design. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Excuse uh, the doctor, man. Yes, please. Uh, this is come come out if I say it is an appraisal of something to determine its worth or fitness. Determine what? Oh, it no? is, oh it's fitness. I'm evaluating to find the worth of my something I'm doing. Yes. Whether it is I, taking me the right direction. Yes, you are right. But then that fitness, fitness seem to be loose. That okay. fitness should be in terms of effectiveness, in terms of yes. efficiency in terms of sustainability. Eh? I get the point. You know, yes, we, may have, we may use different words, eh? but I want you not to miss the point. And the more you digress from the right words, the, the, the more you can get lost. So I want you to always stick to the point that I've given you in the reading uh, slide. You may not cram it the way it should be, but the way you have modified uh, Kamukama is good. Except that you need to fine tune towards the right words. That should be used. Thank you, doctor. Okay, dear. Uh, Abraham, Ayai. Yes, sir. Hey, how are you, Abraham? I'm fine, doctor. Yes, yesterday you were in class, but very quiet throughout. <laughs> yes, I was so quiet. So you have something to tell us before we proceed? Uh, yes, uh, 
<clears throat> yesterday, uh, when you talked about uh, uh, M and E, we came up with the step. You explained the, the steps that are supposed to follow. Mm -hmm. um, and these steps, like uh, we have the categories of workers, supervisors, and others. So <clears throat> these steps, uh, I remember yesterday when you were explaining that this step, if you should uh, you should follow the step from number one up to number, up to the last number. That you shouldn't like if you are to start with the number five, and then you are you are messed up. So uh, <clears throat> you should follow step by step until uh, you get the, uh, the last point of of it. So uh, yesterday I was remembering you saying that. <clears throat> Uh, these steps, uh, we came up with the implementing implementing monitoring plan. So this uh, uh, implementing monitoring plan was like uh, you have to monitoring uh, uh, you have to monitor the the activities, and then when you uh, monitor the activities, you see uh, which direction are you really taken taking. So if you see that this uh, and these are whatever activities that you are doing, you have to see whether they are in line with the goals and objectives of uh, project planning. And then another one also was an, uh, about analyzing monitoring data. So you have to, you have to come down and see, analyze it. Huh? See the, uh, the, whether the, the goals and objectives are in line with what you are trying to, to evaluate or monitoring. And then uh, after that, you come back you write the report, as you said yesterday, that uh, as, uh, as our class is concerned, now you will be monitoring us. And then after having monitoring us, you have to give a report on us. Like assuming, <clears throat> as you talked yesterday about Derek, so you may see, was Derek, was, was Derek been participating in the class? So if the Derek was participating, and then you have to say that Derek is a good student. So you have to recommend that Derek has been in the class and also was been giving the what, uh, was been participating. And then another one was uh, making recommendations. Making recommendation is like when you come up with the projects and you are seeing that the objectives are in, in place and objectives and goals are in the place, then you have to recommend, you, you go to another level. That implies that if you are a student, then you have to be promoted to another level. So that's what I was, uh to remember yesterday sir over to you okay, uh, thank you thank you abraham so ladies and gentlemen uh i will uh, derek has already requested i'm going to give you the slide at a later stage but i wanted to put it in the mood i wanted to first discuss with ict so that we can see how to put everything in the mood and i give you the enrollment key then i expect all of you to enroll for the module then you get the reading material from there. But in case that one seemed to be delayed, then I will post the email of, what, of Derek and he will share with you. Uh, but I want to advise that you, you need to revise as highly as immediately. Don't wait for it to first cool down. When it cools down, I know you are busy people. You are employees, you are employers, you are you are a parent, you are a father, a mother. Eh? You have many other engagements around you. Hmm? With some time, they take away your attention and you don't concentrate. So when you wait at the last minute, sometimes you end up losing the point. Hmm? So I want you to start as highly as immediately. I was thinking that I should be able to give you some assignment to work on today, but if I fail, then next week it will not fail so that you can continue to work on it slowly, slowly, and we agree on which when you should submit. Uh, yes, colleagues, that is what we learned yesterday. So nevertheless, for the sake of those who never attended or those who might have forgotten, this time I want to go a little bit slow, colleagues. Uh, why? For obvious reason. Yes, some of you may be fast learners. You may not need this. But I think I want to go at the pace of the, of the, of the last learner. Mm -hmm. 
So you can bear with me a little bit. And I have reason why I'm being this intentional. I've calculated it is intentional. So when we talk about evaluation, the way you people have defined, it is a regular data collection process. Data must be collected on regular basis. The word is regular basis. Sometimes you can say systematic uh, collection of data. Eh? You collect it carefully. Then you don't stop at collecting the data. You analyze the raw data. And when you have analyzed the raw data, you process it into information. Hmm? And what will that information do? It will help you now in timely decision making, ensuring accountability, and providing also a benchmark for evaluation and learning to take place. Then you have finished monitoring. So monitoring, in a way, comes a little, uh, a little before evaluation, in the sense that it gives a benchmark for evaluation to take place. Evaluation doesn't take place from the blue. It takes place based on the monitoring result that has, has been executed. So in monitoring, you don't stop at collecting data. You must analyze that data and also be ready to use the derived information so that it helps you in decision making, it helps you in accountability, it helps you in providing a basis for learning and also for evaluation. The moment you have it that way, you are good to go. Normally, I get disturbed when I set in an exam uh, for people to define monitoring and evaluation and they they don't they are not able to eh? i get i get disorganized hmm? they are not able to and uh, it's very bad eh? and that one i begin to think whether you have understood the subject or not hmm? because to me it's too basic so the power of monitoring you if you do not uh, if you do not for measuring result, if you do not measure result, probably you do not uh, tell success from failures. And when I'm rewarding, uh, you will not reward success, but sometimes you end up rewarding failures, either intentionally or unintentionally. Mm -hmm. And you cannot learn from it and you cannot make correction. And you cannot also demonstrate accountability or win public support. So that's why we need to measure. Mm -hmm. So monitoring is a systematic attempt to examine the program operation. And when we talk about program operation, we refer to the coverage of the program, the delivery of services related to the program. Eh? And you also try to check on what is supposed to be done, eh? whether it was done or it was not done. Mm -hmm. And if it at all it was done, was it done in an effective way, in a way that it meets the objective or it was not done in an effective way. Yeah? So that is that with monitoring. Uh, we said many other things, we may not uh, look at all of them one at a time. So these are the areas where monitoring is crucial. Uh, and these are the areas that you monitor input activities, output the way you have said in our uh, recap. Uh, then you can monitor monitor project in the following ways through doing field visit, through uh, uh, document review, through reporting, feedback, uh, spot checks, review meeting, tracking, and what have you. Then we also talked about M and E plan yesterday, which I think we are going to concretize today. Remember, as I hope you are all signing in the attendance. So that day we can capture a record of attendance. So I want you to sign.
So an M and E plan is a document detailing how M and E will be conducted in the life cycle of a project. It is as simple as that. It is a document, but as I said yesterday, this document does not implement itself. It is you, the project head, who should implement the document. Hmm? We had our friends who are from outside. Are they there today? Who are those? Present. Huh? Maureen Kayaga. Eh, hey, hey, Maureen, eh? Okay. Yes, they are my, your other colleague is who? There's another one. Namzala Elizabeth. Where Dr. Even me. Francis. Huh? I see my Francis. Where are you, Francis? Uh, what do you mean? Like, I, I am retaking. No, are you in Uganda or you're outside Uganda? No, I'm in Uganda. Then you are not outside. <laughs> Uh, you are with me, and I'm talking about there are some two of our colleagues who are outside the country, and they have given some special requests to be considered. So I always don't want to leave them behind. That's why I, my eyes are always closed on them. So I see me for you, you are with, with us. Uh, even next week, we are going to meet physically. I see me. Is that okay? Yes, doctor. I'm also glad to, I, I would like to meet. It's okay. The other one is Namzala. What Namzala Elizabeth? Eh? Where is she? Yesterday she didn't talk well. We cannot tell whether the uh, internet was okay or not okay. Which country she's in? Eh? And today, it seems she's not there. Yes, friend, I need to be honest with you. You are my colleagues. Hey, I tell you something that is going to finish you. Hey, I need to be honest with you. You see, this learning where you are an adult and you are not very straightforward. Eh? That type of method, anyway, maybe I'm too strict, but it doesn't work out with me because I have bad experience with people who behave like that. Yeah. Hello. I, have, mm, I have bad experience many times they, they, they just fail even me I don't understand but I just find they have already failed yeah. <laughs> I see when lecture is to be there the passion is supposed to appear the passion seem not is not very clear the passion can come late stays for a few minutes and disappears and has already registered the presence yeah. I get the point you give coursework, the passion uh, either submit too highly or submit uh, very late and ask reason why it should be so and give you explanation eh, why he or she had to submit late. Hmm? Those people many times, I don't know why really, God should forgive me. In my but, class, but, they don't push very far. I just doctor, don't know, I cannot tell. Hmm? Doctor, the way you can be serious when you are smiling, Maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah, I tell you this thing. You know, I'm a parent. I don't take joy in anybody's failure. Instead, I derive my joy when I see people getting 90s, 90s. There's a master class, which I thought, I think the best person got 93, followed by 92 and 91. There another one uh, got. Uh, 89, I think, and 87. I felt very happy, but what again defeated me? Again, someone got 24%. I was like, for sure, they got to have mercy. Yeah? I get the point. So, but it all starts with the way, it all starts with your lifestyle. Uh, we are in a world where you need to know what you want. Hmm? You need to know what you want very well. And then after knowing what you want, work for it, become serious. You cannot fit everywhere, by the way. 
I cannot tell you because you are in class, you should abandon your family. No, you cannot abandon your family. Neither can you abandon your job. Eh? And neither should you abandon the class. So at least limit them to those three. But if you think those three are still not sufficient, you also add other engagement around that. Eh? Then at the end of the day, you, you cannot be everywhere. Hmm? Somewhere, somehow, it will uh, disorganize you. Hmm? So that is my piece of advice for sure. And I want to encourage that we need to revise this thing that we are learning. Not only revising, but also put them into practice. Uh, Derek, this second word, Romeo, you have not given us an update. Hello, Derek. Yes, doctor, he was there. I'm from checking. He's there. Oh, but today he's not there. He's there. Even today he's here. I'm seeing him. He's already where there. is he? Roromeo, where are you? The second one, not Roromeo Roy. <sighs> yes, they do. Yes, where is he? I'm not seeing him. I've seen him even posted his whatever in the chat. Yeah, maybe maybe, maybe he just came, came and post posted. On. He came and posted as he did yesterday. Yeah. You see, those are the things yeah, I tell you, colleagues. Yeah. I will not be there to monitor anybody, but I get worried also. Yeah. Let him unmute and talk. He's not there. How can he unmute and talk when you don't exist? Yeah. Our people have to talk on your behalf and defend your availability. That's what happened always. Even you can check in the chat. He posted that the chat is his registration number. Yes, yeah, he name. posted and <laughs> ran away. Yeah. And that's what he might have done yesterday. So you tell him uh, at your laser time that I have not a dark behavior. So colleagues, basically that is it. Uh, so when it comes to monitoring and evaluation plan, eh, there are a series of steps that you should go through in order for you to come up with a very good m and &E plan. Hmm? We'll talk about it at length yesterday. One is that before you come up with any m and &E plan, study the, uh, study the, ex the existing information related to that project. Without the existing information related to the project, you cannot come up with a meaningful plan. You must study it carefully. Mm? Unfortunately, the scope of this uh, lecture doesn't warrant us to go into the detail of a project plan. Eh? But when you were doing project plan, I mean, uh, yes, project planning and management, probably you know how to, to, to write a project plan. Mm? So you study such document very critically. Eh? As a first step. Then second step, you make conceptual uh, framework about uh, the document. You draw uh, linkages between cost and effect relationship within the project. Yeah? You try to make a uh, concept, uh, a brief extract from the, from the document uh, that can draw linkages here and there. So that one can give you a better idea. Now, when you are able to construct some form of conceptual framework from the document you have reviewed, then thirdly, you identify what are the goals and the objectives for this project. If it is a health promotion project, what are its goals and objectives? Very, very important. Then four, what are the indicators? With indicators, I've already told you yesterday, don't worry, we are going, we are coming to this. So what are the indicators? Remember when you are coming up with your objective, especially the specific objective, it has to be smart. So many times a specific objective must at least have one indicator in it. It must have at least one indicator in it. Without an indicator, it does not make sense. Yeah. And I have already told you many, I think at the end of this module, we are going to do correction for, for last year's exam. 
Derek, you will remind me. We are going to do our last session will be to do correction on the exam which was done last year. So basically, when you have the in, when you have the goals and the objective, you have the indicator, then you go to the next stage. Okay? And the next stage is now to determine uh, which categories of workers should be where. Okay? Uh, supervisors, what you give responsibilities to people who should be where. Okay? Then next, after that, you now proceed to do what to develop a timetable of the frequency. How often do you want to monitor this? Hmm? Do you want to monitor it three times, four times, depending on the project scope? Okay? And it is you to decide whatever you think is appropriate, whatever you think is sufficient. Now, after you have uh, monitored, I mean, you have determined the, what, the frequency, then you develop what we call management information system, very important. It's a method of organizing the uh, information. Mm -hmm. So you develop and you strengthen that department very well, management information system. And last but not least, now you develop the required M&E instrument, which in this context is now the M&E plan. Mm -hmm. So if you have these steps, as unfortunately I told you steps are steps. Mm -hmm. You cannot say you will start by strengthening M and E, I mean uh, management information system, then you determine frequency. Uh, you don't start that way. Steps are steps. So you just need to know them the way they are. Yeah? So Maybe if I set for you in an exam, can you fail this? You go through these steps. Then now I need the practical, you know, these steps are theoretical. This is theory, but theory backs the practical element. So if theoretically you know the steps, then you can now come up with the M and E uh, plan. Hmm? But before we come up with the M and E plan, uh, how can you implement the plan? I told you yesterday that the plan does not implement itself. In many cases, it is a document. That details how you plan to do something, how you intend to do something. So you don't expect that document to implement itself. It is you to implement it. And how do you implement it? You have to conduct monitoring activities. Hmm? If I'm to teach you, remember the attendance list is taking place. Uh, people are doing this and that. At some point, they are submitting coursework, they are registering on Moodle. If I'm not teaching, then I'm not doing anything. Then it makes no sense. So for, for those data to be collected well, to be analyzed well, there must be evidence that I've been teaching. So for you to implement the m e plan, you must conduct those monitoring activities. Then you must analyze the monitoring data. After you have analyzed the monitoring data, you must come up with a report, eh? what we call m e report. Hmm? Then you must make recommendations. You must make recommendation and you implement the recommendation. Every recommendation that has been made must be recommend, I mean, must be implemented. I don't want those recommendations which are put in the self. It just stays there and attract dust. No, that's not proper. <laughs> Why people are to make recommend? Of course, this time at this point, you are going to be making what they call uh, evidence-based recommendation. Eh? It is not just from curiosity. There is evidence backing it. Probably the evidence arose from from the monitoring activities that was done. Eh? There now uh, you modify the monitoring system if necessary. This one, you do it only if it is necessary. If it is not necessary, you consolidate. And lastly, you continue to monitor. Okay? So these are the only ways in which you can implement an m and &E plan. Hmm? Will you forget this one if I ask you in an exam really? Because I can see three areas to examine here. One is the step for m and &E. uh, Three is how to implement m and &E plan. Then uh, four is to draw an M and E plan for a project where I, may, I might have determined for you the topic, or I tell you to choose the topic for yourself, which is related to health promotion. 
Hmm? You can choose a topic of your own that is related to health promotion. There now you you come up with an M and E plan for it. Okay? So three questions in one. So can you forget this one really? By show of arm, who can uh, somebody can help us? Can you forget this? Kennedy, Alonda Kennedy, can you forget this? After reading the, the, the thing and the understanding it, no. But now maybe I cannot remember all. Yeah, you are not supposed to remember all. Mm -hmm. But for you to remember very well and correctly, you must put in effort. And yes, effort is one is, yes, not only for you, for everybody. And one is by attending the class like this. Uh, then two, by either you can have your discussion group where you, you are, uh, appoint yourself topics to discuss. Eh? Maybe you have a group of, don't make a group which is too big. Eh? Otherwise there will be too many free riders. Eh? So you can have a group of maybe two or three or maximum four and each of you has topics and you discuss. Hmm? You brainstorm on a particular topic and what have you, when there's a leader. Dr. Mona. Yes. Deo is on, he's typing in the chat that his network is on and off. The one you were looking for. <laughs> the way people are defending Deo for sure. Deo, I see you have your goat with you. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you so much. But don't feel offended colleagues i'm just interested in your learning it is my responsibility so when there's something for some reason you are not there i also feel haunted uh beatrice you are now there beatrice nanzala hello nanzala beatrice hello beatrice nanzala Yes, sir. Hey, how are you? I'm fine, but I can hardly hear you. I, I really am struggling. I cannot hear you. So where are you? Which country are you in? Hello, Nanzala Beatrice, which country are you in? Okay, sorry about that. Now, I don't know how best we can help here because now if you email, I mean, if online you are also not able to hear, you don't have stable internet, then learning is not taking place. And physically, it's also impossible because you are very far away. You cannot come back there now. How do we help? Should, so, should we be able to proceed. read this, to view this recording? I think it would be of Aha, uh -huh. there it does not how they do things. If it is about reading, I would all, I would not even be in class. I just give you the reading material, say, let's meet in exam. People will read and they just pass with flying colors, but learning is not like that, my dear. Learning is much more than just reading. Yeah. Okay, so when you go through all those uh, steps for, for, what? for monitoring and evaluation, for designing it, then you should be able to come up with a tool similar to this or a template similar to this. That now requires you to populate. Are you able to see this template? Yes, doctor. Yes. So you should be able to come up with a template like this. Yes. Where this side you have, okay. You have uh, the goal, you can list your goal here under this, the outcome, you can state the outcome here, the output here and the like. Then you have this column for indicators. Hmm? 
indicators related to the goal indicator related to the outcome indicator related to the output. Then you define your indicator. You have a column for giving a brief description of what that indicator is. For example, this is, a, you may not take this example serious, but it's for learning purpose. If you have percentage of grade six primary students uh, continuing on to higher school, then you define that one as number of students who start the first day of grade seven divided by total number of grade six. Uh, student in the previous uh, year multiplied by 100. This is definition. You are trying to define, to make the indicator clear. Or you can say, my indicator is, uh, my, my indicator is maternal mortality ratio. So if it is maternal mortality ratio, then what would be the definition? You define the denominator, I uh, mean the numerator will be number of uh, mothers who die within uh, 42 days after delivery and what have you. Or, I mean, divide by a uh, number of life bar multiplied by 100,000. You will have finished defining that indicator. Then now you go ahead and set your baseline. There must be a column for setting baseline. Then a column for setting target. And another column for sources of data where if it is maternal mortality ratio, where are you going to get the data from? If it is the context of the school, the way I have put here, then where will you get the data from? Hmm? So maybe the data in this context, we're saying primary and high school enrollment records. If it is maternal mortality ratio, maybe you can say you are going to get data from health facilities or you get a survey report. It will be your source of data. Then frequency, we talk about frequency, we determine the frequency. How often do you want to do this? Maybe annually, maybe biannually, maybe quarterly, whatever it is. Then who will be responsible for that? I uh, think it is at, goal, at the level of goal, you can say maybe a program manager or somebody you think is, uh, can do it better. Then what about the reporting? Eh? Where will it be reported? You, you have to describe where it will be reported. So now, when you go through all those steps, you should be able to come up with a template similar to this. And I always find it a problem, ladies and gentlemen, I need to bring this to your attention. I always find it a problem when you are supposed to draw an M and E plan for anything and you don't have the right columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And maybe out of the nine column for you, you have only, only seven. And now you want to say you have passed. Normally what I do, if you draw a right template without entering anything here, without entering anything here, you already got 50% of the marks. If maybe that one requires uh, 10 marks, you will have already got five by only drawing a correct template. Then when you begin to populate, depending on the quality of what you are populating, by just merely populating, I add for you uh, maybe 25%. So if you have populated this with relatively correct information, relatively, they are not absolutely correct, but relatively correct. You find out of 10, you are already getting 7.5 out of 10. Now, if the quality of the information you have put is also precise and highly correct, then now you get 10 over 10. That's how I always score. So when I have said something and I tell you to do it and then you come up with a wrong template, that one, it takes me ages for me to believe that what you have populated inside there is now the one which is correct. But the, the template is wrong. Are you getting the point? I begin to think hard whether you have really got the concept right or, or, or wrong. Hmm? So again, we talk about evaluation. We said evaluation, and as unlike uh, monitoring, which is uh, unlike monitoring, which is uh, a continuous process of data collection, analysis, and using the derived information to make decision. Monitoring is about making making judgment, uh, judging, uh, or assessing uh, the sorry project for interruption. For its relevancy. Hello? Yes. Yes, please. 
Uh, we have not used the M and A table, yes. and uh, we are jumping to evaluation. We have not done what? I think. Sorry, we have not done what? Oh my God, your network. Let's go through the M and the M and A. Hello. Yes, Alex. You post in the chat, eh? your network is very bad. Hello. You were saying it's you okay. were saying that we have it's not okay. finished the the M&E table. The other it's part in the M&E table. And, &E and uh, because we need to know how we are going to, to populate it before we can proceed okay. on to evaluation. Uh, because in the recent exam, we said that we realized that uh, Populating the M and E table was a very big challenge to some of us. So I think we need to go in details of how we are going to populate it before we proceed. Mm. That was, uh, what yes, yes, yes. But you got the first room. Go to the first room. Yes, go to the first room. So I've got your point. Uh, Kotias, your hand was up. Yeah, good morning, class. Yeah, I was going to uh, help uh, uh, what Alex was asking. I think he was asking that um, we we need to do some bit of practice. We populate the templates before we jump into evaluation because I think the challenge that most people had in the last um, uh, uh, module was how to populate actually the whole template. I don't know whether we'll okay. have a chance with another example to navigate through and then we yes. let it yeah. that we yeah. can get like, yeah. Okay. Derek, you can help me with Komwangi Christian, you mute her or you delete her from the class. Okay, Komwangi Christian, please. We can continue, sir. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I, okay, maybe let me first go through this. We are coming back to the app template. So uh, evaluation on the other hand is a periodic assessment. Sometimes they call it episodic assessment of the relevancy of the project, of the effectiveness of the project, the project, and also sustainability of the project. So when you begin to make judgment about whether the program is relevant or efficient or effective or impactful or whatever it, is, it means, you're already evaluating the project. Yeah? And of course, this one is also a debate of its own, which we shall talk about at the later stage, if we have the sufficient time. So, Evaluation is carried out after an interval of time, not like uh, monitoring. With monitoring, it is done uh, regularly on a day-to-day -day basis. Hmm? But evaluation is done at interval or at uh, certain episodes, maybe at the beginning of the project, in the middle of the project, at the end of the project, and many years after the project has ended, something similar to that. So it is not something that you do on daily basis, like, like evaluation. And then when you are doing it, you are trying to assess uh, for its relevancy, for its efficiency, for its effectiveness, uh, for its impact, and also for sustainability. Dear colleagues, I think my computer is a bit low. I might jump out a bit and try to correct something. So in case I go off, don't go away. I will be able to come back. My computer is just having some small issues that I need to rectify. Doctor, you're breaking it. Eh? Yes, I'm saying my computer is having some issues I need to rectify. So in case I go off, don't go away. Mm, I will have to come back when I sort it out. 
So basically that is that with evaluation. Eh? So in the evaluation, it helps you to determine the worth or the value of the project, uh, the effectiveness of the project attributable, I mean the impact attributable to the project and the cost effectiveness and sustainability. So, uh, in summary, monitoring is the process of gathering information about a program or project. And the process includes collecting data, monitoring progress, purpose of monitoring is to track progress of a project or a program. Uh, then data collected in monitoring Data collected in monitoring can be qualitative or quantitative. Be mindful about this college. Not every data you collect must be quantitative. There are some data that can be qualitatively uh, collected. Mm -hmm. It can be collected through monitoring tools such as progress report, uh, such as uh, beneficiary report, such as project reports, such as performance report and many others. Mm -hmm. And monitoring can be internal. Uh, and to a lesser extent external, but predominantly most of the monitoring processes are within, they are internal. Internal means they are within the organization. They are within your control. Hmm? Rarely will you have people monitoring coming from out lesser extent. Hmm? So evaluation is a specific, I mean, is a scientific process that uh, gauges the success of the project or program in meeting, in terms of meeting the objective. So it's a systematic process to determine the merit or the, the worth, the value or the significance of the project. Eh? So in other words, it assesses the value that has been implemented. So there's a table here for the difference between monitoring and evaluation, which I think we'll come back to it at a later stage. Uh, but first, let us go back to what somebody has asked. That we needed to complete this table. You see, uh, when you are implementing a project, there's a phase where you are supposed to come up with uh, with uh, there's a phase where you are supposed to come up with with uh, goals and objectives. So when you are setting goals and objectives, you should be mindful. This objective that I'm setting, where does it lie? Is it an outcome objective? Is it an objective that will be used to measure the outcome of the project? Or it is an objective that will measure the goal of the project? in which case you also call it goal anyway. Or it is an objective that will be related to the output. It is again you to think. So you can say my project will have maybe four or five objectives. The first objective will be about uh, related to the goal. The second objective, those are the linkages we are talking about for every project. You must have that chronological linkages eh, at the back of your mind as a program lead. And uh, as I told you many times, it is you who knows, you the program head who knows. Then people who are working under you, they may not know unless you have empowered them. Mm -hmm. So you should know which objective is for what. Eh? If it is the objective for outcome, probably you, have, you put it here. Then you begin to, to ask yourself, what can be the appropriate indicators for this objective? Should it be one indicator or two indicators? For example, if it is maternal mortality ratio, that must be reduced to zero as a goal. Then now you begin to ask yourself, what should we rely on as our indicator? For you to measure maternal mortality ratio one, you need to have data related to how many mothers have died during pregnancy or at labor or uh, 42 days after delivery. Hmm? 
you need to know I have record of that number, the number of murders. So that one mean it is an indicator. Then two, you need to have a record of life birth. Hmm? So that means if you are going, uh, your, or your indicator is maternal mortality ratio, you cannot say you will have only one indicator. If you have only one indicator, then you will not measure that. I get the point, colleagues. Somebody should respond. Am I making sense here? Yes. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. If it is uh, yes. maternal ratio, you should now think. It is you who knows you are, you are objective well. Maybe your objective is to reduce maternal mortality ratio to zero. Then you must have, uh, as you are indicated, you must have record of number of mothers who are dying and according to the definition. Then uh, you should also have uh, a number of life births. Eh? So it is only when you have those two that you can be able to what, to measure maternal mortality ratio. <laughs> If you have only one of those, then you cannot effectively do it. Okay? So you can also have another what, another indicator. You can think about it at your private time when you are doing discussion. So the bottom line here is that as you create your M and E plan, you need to be mindful about your objective and which objective is for what. You need to have an objective that will uh, try to help you to measure or determine the output the objective that will uh, measure or help you to determine the what, uh, the, the outcome, the objective that will help you to determine the impact or the goal. Hmm? Then you begin to craft indicators related to each of those, whether they should be one, two, then uh, you go on and on, then you define that indicator the way I help you to define maternal mortality ratio. If it is maternal, uh, neonatal mortality, uh, neonatal mortality rate, you should again give the definition here. You should define it and you need to have the appropriate indicators for it. Eh? If it is maternal, uh, neonatal mortality rate, what do you need? You need the number of neonates uh, who have died. Then you need the number of those who have not died. Mm -hmm. the, all the children born, but they have not died. So it, that means if you have an uh, indicator of number of children only without the uh, number of children who have died, units who have died, but you don't have the record of what, of those who, who were born, then that means you cannot complete this. Yeah? That means if you have, have such indicator, then you must have a minimum of two what uh, other indicators to measure that. If you have that one, maybe like your outcome or whatever it is. So basically it is as simple as that. That's how you go about it. Have I made sense? Of course, setting baseline target data sources, this one, they are now obvious. Have I answered you? Yes, colleagues, can somebody respond? It's okay, Dr. Mohit. Yeah, we've got a doctor. Okay. So now the rest, you know, our program is only for three weekends. So we cannot exhaust everything. But what I expect from you is you can now take on this template. I'm going to give you a better template also. I mean, the one that is bigger than this. I will put on the mood one. So what I expect now from you is to acquaint yourself with this template, study the template into detail at your study time, eh? and try to think through your project and try to populate it appropriately. Eh? I always don't love to choose topic for people because sometimes it can be highly restrictive. But if you choose a topic of your own, you can know which one is what. Yes, Abraham, your arm is up. Yes, uh, doctor, I wanted to know, uh, do we have to draw the template before the topic or why we need to, to we pass the, state out the topic and then after that we draw the uh, pamphlet? Yes, you have the topic. You need to have the topic. Okay. You need to have not only the topic, but you may need to have 
be at the back of your mind, you need to have a proposal somewhere or a proposal that is still in your head, which is not yet put down to paper. Hmm? And it is that one which will help you now to draw the correct template. Are we together, Abraham? Okay, thank you, doctor. Mm, thank you, dear. Any other concern? Yes, Ronald. Yes, doctor. Thank you. Um, just inquiring where I can be placed in my objective. Where? I got the question, but where to put the objective? like in this template, or I just keep them at the back of the mind? No, the, the objective, you put them here. Goal, you state it here under goal. The heading is goal, yes. then you start writing. Right. Are you seeing where my cursor is? Yes. You have seen, eh? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Outcome, you have seen outcome. You state the, the objective related to the outcome here. OK. It's output here now. Here. You state the objective related to the output here. Thank you. Seen, yes, sir. Okay, Thank you. Very good. Very good, Ronald. Any other constant colleagues before we can go for a break? We give ourselves a break of how long? Derek. We can have like Hello. 30 minutes. That means it's sufficient. I hope it will not go away. Huh? Yes, doctor. That means then we can. Okay, uh, maybe, maybe we can come back at 11 30. Eh? Okay, doctor. Thank you very much. Okay, all the best, colleagues. So, remember, there is a form in the chat where you're supposed to register your attendance. So, make sure you register your attendance. It is only here. You should shouldn't be shared outside here. So it is only members who will be attending that will be registered for the attendance of the lecture. So kind of let's maintain that this point. Thank you very much. Make sure you register. But, but Derek. Yes, please. Hi, Henry. I, Derek, I tried to register, but uh, I tried to register, but this thing failed. I don't know. Maybe you said that I should put the, the email when I try to put email and also lead me to put my password. It failed. It's not like the other, whatever, the other attendant that we used to. You have, you have to, it has to confirm that your email is authentic. That's why it takes you to put in the password. But this is an email that I will be using on whatever. That means you put the password as it requests. You put the password for that email. It confirms that this is your email that you're registering under. That they, it's done to, it's called authenticity. Like they are trying to authenticate that you are the one registering, not someone using your email registering. So it's a criteria that is used to make sure it is authentic. Hi, David. Uh, uh, this is David. Eh? Yes, please. Y yesterday, I think I missed that link. You need to start with the, you start with the month of the date. Derek. Then put the date, then the year, otherwise you'll refuse. Did we use this link yesterday, Derek? I didn't see one. No, yesterday we didn't. Okay. Yeah, yesterday, yes, I didn't see the link. Yesterday I captured them direct. Okay, okay, thank you. So if you're having any challenge, kind of let me know. But uh, I've seen people registered. Yesterday we all passed. I'm seeing people already registered. So someone is saying they're not doing something. Derek, try to repair. Amen. Try to send back again. They send it. Kindly well, send it understanding again. Him and e plan. For them, they were registering. Then we can have a challenge. What challenge could that be, dear? I want to see you in person. It is OK. There you go. You stand on your video so that she sees you. Turn on your video. <laughs> Someone is saying reshaping. I don't know. What do you mean by reshaping? What do you want me to reshape in the form? Eric, your video first. We are having break for how long? Later, 30 minutes. So we are resuming at 11.30. So back to the main point. Someone is saying reshaping. What do you mean by reshaping? Like Resharing. Just typing. Reshare. Okay, no problem. Hope everyone has seen the registration form. <laughs> 
Yeah, but, but Derek, bam, yeah, another challenge. Eh? Yes, uh, Dr. Omona is proposing to post work on Moodle, but remember, since the previous issues of not uh, being able to sign into Moodle, it has still been persistent. So please. Even, even me, I can't sign in my so, Moodle. Yes. Before he Hopefully, does, over the so weekend, please. when we come, we find the IT guys and they support us. Otherwise, it's tight. And they did not. They gave us guidelines, but more of even me. So maybe over the weekend when we come, they I can be the there. Problem and they help us. is that their side. But you know how Doctor Mona does his things. We may fail to submit on Moodle, and we get the text automatically. You'll be early for next year. Olimba, Olimba, Olimba. Hey, old age. <laughs> Doctor oh, Mona. <laughs> Doctor uh, Mona, you are very close generation. Yeah. Don't even change Doctor oh, Mona's oh, name. You, you are very strict. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you are very strict. So I don't want oh, to underestimate your well, powers. Eh? <laughs> I want to do the right thing. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. Uh, Maureen, I think you can try it again. <clears throat> I've shared the form, made some changes for the date, and then you can try again. Then, uh, Mine Sharon, worked. Sorry? Okay, Mine good. worked. Okay, that's good. Then, Sharon, you failed to really? register the date in your form. Yes, please. If the now, form is do we need to re-register? Like you did okay. yesterday. No, it's hectic. Yeah, people keep on and dogs, so you, you might not get all yes, the participants. That is true. So I missed out a lot of people. I had to just again keep on taking them all over again. So it's hectic. But if someone registers, then you can capture the information there. Derek, are you able to see my registration? <laughs> Automatically, if you had it, it registers. And let me check. Confirm. Okay. Or you can stay on, I'll be mentioning maybe at the end because because I've seen like there are 28 um, people mm. who are there. Actually, 38. Let me try you can read through, Mr. Derek. Try to read through. Can read it there. For you, you are present. Don't worry. There are now 42. Okay. So you should see here. This is still what I'm going to do. Yeah, so I'm going to do it. Yeah, 
Kali, that is enough. But it's very kita jaga gambar dewa dan dewo. So I'm seeing Stuart. I'm seeing Namlesa Sara. I'm seeing Evelyn Mwabra, Victoria, Gloria Pio, Sylvia Ronald, uh, Patrick Amoti, Semanga Esther, Adiel Flavia Lidi, Alupo, Roy Rosomio, Nawuke Aprosi, Nambi Ruth, Emmanuel Obodin, Koshias, Mohamed, Kaivire Po, uh, Kalembe Daphne, Eston, Bamleke, Rosomio de Gracias, Rebecca Richard, Nasu Uga Esther, Rukuya Robert, Charlie Mpa, then Moses, and then uh, Rorias, Chama Peter, Jolly, Kasasa Ismail, Dorin, Pochirumila, then Boaz, and then Noah, seeing Sharon, I'm seeing Maureen, I'm seeing Stella, uh, I'm seeing Kenneth, I'm seeing David, I'm seeing uh, Julius, I'm seeing Francis, I'm seeing Paul Kut, I'm seeing uh, Siki Rasul, Kai Brenda, uh, Nambogo Harriet, and then Kemigisha Fiona. So far, they're the ones that have registered. So for the others, I think you Thank can you. remind them to do the registration, because I think we are about more than 60. So more other guys have been registered. Thank you. But I have registered, you have not read me, Derek. Derek, have you seen my name? You guys are making me to laugh. I was reading your name. <laughs> Derek? Yes, please, someone was calling my name. Yes, please. Yeah, I was inquiring, did you read my name? Yes, I read your name, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes. Any other person who didn't hear their name before I, I, I break off? Hello? Hello? Derek, my... I'm, I'm, I've, I've logged off this, so I can't see someone who's talking. Maybe someone can mention their name. Because I'm saying, let me read for you again. There is Stuart, there is Namlesesa, there is Evelyn, there is Victoria, there is Gloria, there is Ronald, there is Christine, there is Amoti, there is Semwanga, there is Flavia, there is Machula, there is Roy, there is Mabukerapros, there is Nambirut, there is Emma, there is Koshias, there is Blandina, there is uh, Hamida, there is Mohammed, there is Poka Ibira, there is Daphne, there is Bam Eston, there is Gracious, there is Richard, there is uh, Esther, Robert, Charimpa, Moses, and then uh, Glorious, Chama Peter, Jolly, uh, Ismail, then Doreen, Nam then Pochirumira, uh, Boaz, and then Noah, um, Sharon, then Maureen, and then Stella, Kenneth, David, uh, Julius, Francis, Paul, Asiki, then Brenda, uh, uh, Harriet, and then Kemisha. Then, so, then I'd come, come, my own name is not there. I don't know where, which form you've used. So you know, yes, sir. Someone was saying about her. Who was that person? Your name. You didn't hear my name. Uh. <laughs> no problem. You go for, you go for what? For break. Jen, you're not there. I didn't see your name. Derek, Derek, you need a break. Derek, where is the phone? They'll, they'll continue no. completing until we finish that session. Yes. Now, Bernard, you are asking for a form and you're asking whether you just said yet you don't even know where the form is. Now you sent the director. Okay, here for me. So you're asking whether you're Derek, Derek, you register on Kamakama's behalf. <laughs> 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 Come on. As a clan leader, clan leader, the former yes, president is in the chat. Uh, oh. the the other team members to, uh, from the other side, also kind of So that we do understand.
Hello, members. We'll be back from the break. Thank you. You're welcome. OK. So uh, are you able to see this slide? Yes, doctor. Mm -hmm. we, can yes, doctor Mona, we can see. OK, now before I start discussing this slide with you, uh, the concern you have raised. Uh, I don't know what I should say, but I'm also seeing a lot of phobia 
phobia to new learning, new forms of learning called Moodle. Eh? Many of you are phobic to, to learning something new. You are not alone, that is human nature. In uh, human being have the fear of change. Eh? It is, just in, hold on a bit. So human nature, human being, we always fear change. Eh? Because uh, you don't know what that change will bring. <laughs> Unfortunately, change is part and partial of life. Uh, so the best way to go is just to adopt changes. Eh? They may many times they are for your good. So Moodle, it may have its own challenges, but I think for us, you know, we are also employees. So that is what we have been advised. To use Moodle as much as we can, eh? because it has been proven to be very effective. Eh? Uh, like, uh, for example, our colleagues who are outside the country, who are also part of this lecture. I'm supposed to examine them, but I'll examine them via Moodle. Uh, when I examine them via Moodle, it stays longer in the system. And even the administration or the university management can follow what has taken place or what is taking place on the Moodle. So it makes the learning more, much better. So colleagues, what I'm trying to say here is that it may have some challenges, but the challenges are not too big. The challenges are not overweighing the, what, the advantages. Now you find uh, you are supposed to submit your coursework probably in the next two or three weeks. And for you, you wait when it has come to just less than three hours to the deadline and you make the loudest noise. Moodle does not work. <laughs> <laughs> and you had the whole of three weeks to work out eh, and submit, which you did not finish. And now you are trying to demonstrate that you can finish in the next one hour or in the next few minutes. So there was one of the students sometime back, I think, in the lot of Wing Alex. The passion uh, was supposed to submit the, the work the result, I mean, the, the exam or the coursework. So the person was left with, I think, less than 20 minutes, was left with about 10 minutes. So say now the system is not working. And yet the system was just browsing slowly, slowly because of internet issues. Yeah? Ah, the system is not working. The person had to send to Alex and had to forward to me right away because it was left with uh, less than 10 minutes. And by the time it even reached me, uh, the 10 minutes had already elapsed and I had rejected it, that is late submission. So when I tried to go beyond that to try to evaluate, I realized this was uh, an isolated case where the person just didn't do uh, her part and now wanted to blame it on the system. Hmm? Wanted to blame it on the system, which was not right. You know, the system also has its own language. Sometimes the internet can become slow, the thing can be browsing slowly, slowly. Other times, uh, maybe there are those general challenges that can come across. So for you to be a whole round person, hmm, you need to be one who is fully aware of all those eventualities in life. So you manage all of them concurrently as you are doing your work. You will be a very, very strong person. But if eventually it takes you by surprise all the time, maybe this time next year, the year after next year, then we now know the problem is with you. Hmm? So the problem of the Moodle is not very big. It's not very alarming. In case you don't have, and I'm also considerate. I told you I'm also a parent. Hmm? So when Derek writes to me that everybody has issues with the Moodle, there's no way I can say, let's proceed. Yeah. But now if everybody else is submitting, you have 54 people in class and only two have issues with the Moodle. 
And their issues with the Moodle did not come in time. It comes at the time of submission. Then I just, I also just pray for the grace of God for those people. Eh? So I know it is part of the journey. Hmm? But if it is the general problem everywhere, then it's understandable. Have I answered you? Do you have any concerns, colleagues? It's okay, doctor. So, and also, by the way, when you also finish from Uganda Matters University, you will also go with your head high, knowing that you have gone through the experience of Moodle. Yeah? <laughs> so you know it very well. So people will learn from you. In future, when they talk about online, then you never know after this. Uh, Alex, when Alex was telling us he's outside the country, uh, you never know, you might learn uh, online somewhere, maybe you have master degree or even your PhD, you can do it online. And it all starts like the way you're starting with Moodle. So what I encourage you to do is acquaint yourself with the Moodle as much as you can. Where there are some issues, rectify it before the time for using for official use. You, you interact with ICT, then ICT can uh, give you, I mean, can organize your thing well and what have you, uh, and you move, up, move forward. But now the problem, if you have abandoned it, then you want to remember it at the time of submission, then the problem becomes too big. It will become a real problem. No? Okay. So maybe if people are too fearful about Moodle, I can first set, send this first presentation to the email of Derek. Then uh, the rest will now be on Moodle. <laughs> Is it made much better? Yes, doctor, thank you very much. Okay. I also want to relieve our Yes, doctor. <laughs> thank you, thank you, doctor. Yes. Uh, I don't want people to be over stressful and anxious. Eh? It is not godly for people to be stressful. Eh? Anxiety so I accept anxiety relief, very good. Uh, but now the way to go is not to avoid Moodle still. Eh? <laughs> this is only to relieve the anxiety a bit eh? so that people uh, adapt to the, to the learning platform. So okay. colleagues, that's what I'll do. Maybe this first presentation I'll send to, to Derek, then the rest I upload them on the Moodle, including the first one. Then uh, the coursework I will also put it on the Moodle. Hmm? Plus the instruction. You have when you're telling us is enough to relieve the answer. Is enough, eh? <laughs> uh, okay, guys. Eh? So now I want us to look at this. Now, another area which is very highly examinogenic. I ask you what is monitoring and evaluation or define monitoring and evaluation and you cannot define it. or you define it in a funny way. Eh? Then I again ask you about uh, differences between monitoring and evaluation. You again uh, give me one or two which are even shoddy and you dry there and you want 25 marks. I also ask you now, these 25 marks will come from where? Because even me, I don't know where it should come from. Are you getting the point? So for me, always what I do, I give you maximum, but I want you to concentrate. Yeah? Of course, knowing you are adults, you are busy people, hmm? uh, and this is the life that we have. But amid the busy schedule that you have, I keep also trying trying within your mean to do something at least. Hmm? Keep trying. Life is about uh, trial and failure to give up. Eh? You, there are some people who come for exam life. Eh? I think that is suicide. Eh? You have not revised anything. You have not practiced. You have not discussed with your colleagues. But because time for exam has come, you say, let me go and face it. In project planning and management, there is a course unit that I did about uh, management of risk. Some people, how they manage risk, they wait for the risk to come and they go through the risk and see what will happen, uh, what will happen afterwards. 
They just wait for the, they don't plan for the risk. They wait for the risk, go through it and wait to see what has happened to them. Yeah? Again, that is not a very wise uh, approach. Hmm? Many times you should prepare. You should not wait for the risk to come there and you go through it. Eh? You wait for exam to come, you know you have not prepared at all, but since the day has come, you must go. Don't do it that way. You say, ah, me, I think I'm not prepared. And you don't go. Or if you are prepared, you think you are prepared enough, you can go and do your best. Hmm? And how to prepare, you don't prepare when the timetable has come out. The timetable comes when you are already fully prepared. You keep on revising, you keep on discussing this slide that we have shared. You keep on discussing with your colleagues time and time again. And eventually you will get the principle right. And nothing will work, we will do tricky for you. So monitoring, as we have said, Monitoring is a systematic and routine collection of information about the program or project activities. Whereas evaluation is a periodic assessment, periodic assessment of the program activities or of the program. So monitoring is ongoing process, which is done to see if things or activities are going on track or not. That is regularly tracks the program. So monitor, monitor, monitoring helps you to track the program to see whether things are going right or wrong so that you can be able to correct it before it is too late. Meanwhile, evaluation, for it is done on, on what we call a periodic basis to measure the success against, against the, what, the, the objective. That is, uh, it is an in-depth assessment of the program. So if the objective says maybe you must collect, uh, uh, what can I say? You must treat five patients per day. Eh? Evaluation, I mean, evaluation will come to say, how much did you treat? Eh? If maybe per day means 24 hours, evaluation will come at the, after the 12 hours and say, you are supposed to, I mean, to treat five, uh, patient, but how many have you now treated? How many did you treat? I get the point. So monitoring is, uh, is to be done starting from the initial stage of the project, while evaluation is to be done after a certain point of time of the project. Okay? Usually at the, meet, uh, at the meet of the project, completion of the project, or while moving from stage, from one stage to another, to another stage. So what am I saying? What I'm saying, yes, much as I've said evaluation is like that, but there's also, remember, there's also baseline evaluation that is done before the project is started. Okay? So that you have to baseline values. Then you can do it in the middle of the, of the project, that is midpoint of the project, you can do it at the end of the project or even many years after the project has ended. Yeah? But in monitoring, you cannot do it that way. You do it uh, from the starting point of the project. As soon as the project starts, you start on also with monitoring. Mm -hmm. Then monitoring is usually, is done usually by the internal members of the team. As I've told you, since monitoring is about day-to-day -day activities that people do, eh? you cannot expect outsiders to be the one to do it for you. You must, many times it is done by people internally, but predominantly for evaluation, people from outside are the ones who come to do it. Eh? So it is external. I'm not saying you cannot have internal members. You can have internal members who will help you to also do it so that you correct yourself. Mm -hmm. but it is not common. The one that is common is for members to come from outside yeah, when they are doing evaluation. So monitoring again, provide information about the current status and thus help to take immediate remedial action if necessary. Mm -hmm. Whereas evaluation uh, provide recommendation, information for long-term planning and lesson for organizational growth and success. So 
in evaluation, if you collect data and analyze and make use of it, you can be able to correct yourself as an immediate remedial step, which is not really the case with what with, with, with evaluation. So again, if, uh, evaluation monitoring focuses on input activities and output. Eh? Meanwhile, uh, evaluation focuses on outcome, impact, and overall goal of the project. So their areas of focus also differ. Hmm? The way we have said earlier on. Then monitoring process include regular meetings, interviews, monthly and quarterly reviews, ETC, which are many times they're usually quantitative data. Hmm? We are not saying that there cannot be any qualitative monitoring data. They are also there. Be mindful about that. Meanwhile, evaluation uh, process includes intense uh, data collection, both qualitative and quantitative. Hmm? So for you to make judgment, sometimes uh, there's what, I hope you have heard about mystery clients. Mystery clients is like uh, you are giving some services, then uh, maybe to community X, then a member of your team say, maybe you are a supervisor, will go to community X and will pretend to be a client. Eh? When the person is really not a real client, but goes to be with those clients who are there to try to find out what you are doing, whether it is, it is being accepted or not accepted. So that is a qualitative approach of doing, which, which is predominantly done by done in what? In evaluation. So monitoring has multiple points of data collection while evaluation done at interval only. So monitoring gives answers about the present scenario of the project towards achieving plan results, considering human resources, budget, material activities, and output. Meanwhile, evaluation assesses the relevance, impact, sustainability, effectiveness, and efficiency of the project. Monitoring studies the present information experiences of the project, while evaluation studies the past experience of the project perform of the project performance. Hmm? So, because I told you monitoring, I mean evaluation, you can do at the beginning, which is baseline, or before the project has started. Then you do midway in the project, or at the end of the project or many years after the project has ended. That means the experience that we are looking for in evaluation are those ones uh, which are for the past. For example, you have come in the middle of the program. You are not looking at that particular point when you came in to do evaluation. You are looking for what has already passed. Eh? Maybe if the project is for one year and you have come in June, you're looking for what has passed in the, in the first six months. Hmm? Or you are coming at the end of the year, what has happened uh, for the full year when they were executing the project. That's what we mean. Eh? Then also monitoring checks whether the project uh, did what it is said to, it would do. Meanwhile, evaluation checks whether the project uh, had the impact it intended. So monitoring also help to improve the project design and functioning of the current project while evaluation help to improve project design of future project. So I want to stretch this point. Uh, what you do, if you are doing monitoring activities, your interest is to redeem the current project you are, you are working on. You don't want that project to die. That is your major interest. So if there were some, uh, issues related to the design, you want to correct it immediately so that it can now deliver successful results. But then for evaluation, that's not the focus. The focus of evaluation is that future projects should now be okay when they have learned from this one. <laughs> I get the point. So it helps to improve project design of the future project, not the current project. Hmm? 
the interest is not on the current project. Yeah? Maybe the current project is only forming a basis for learning. So that future project can now be better. Or even for future project to be abandoned completely because of what they have, they have found in the current project. Yeah? So monitoring looks at details of activities while evaluation does not look at detail of activities, but rather looks at the bigger picture. Hmm? Monitoring compares the current progress with the planned progress, whereas evaluation looks at the achievement of the program uh, along both positive or negative intended or unintended effects. I think the rest you can now read them at your private time. Monitoring answers the question, are we doing things right? Then evaluation answers the question, are we doing the right things? So you can now read the rest at your private time. So colleagues, those are the few differences I've put for you for monitoring and evaluation. Now, uh, this one, we talked about it yesterday, the project life cycle in the context of health promotion project. And in the project life cycle, you can read this slide at your private time. From what we said yesterday, is that monitoring and evaluation sits in the heart of the cycle of the project. The cycle of the project uh, is start from uh, maybe, let me see, you can see maybe problem identification and course analysis, whatever it is, you may call it. It goes to goal and objective setting, then designing uh, implementation plan. And then after that implementation and service delivery and the cycle continues on and on. Hmm? So from what we said yesterday is that Monitoring and evaluation is required at every stage. It's in the heart of the cycle of the project. If you want the project anyway to, 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 to work, to achieve its objective well, then you must monitor and evaluate at every stage. You can uh, have maybe short monitoring and evaluation uh, uh, exercises in problem identification. You can have another one related to goal, goal and objective. You can have another one related to designing implementation plan, another one related to, to implementation and service delivery, or you have monitoring and evaluation, which is for every, every staff. Hmm? So at one point, like within problem identification alone, you can monitor and evaluate, but you can also monitor and evaluate for the entire cycle of the project. Hmm? So that is how important monitoring and evaluation can be. So it is sits in the, it plays a central role in the project uh, management cycle. Mm -hmm. This is similar to what I've already said. So the result chain in M and E is what we talked about yesterday. Uh, I may not spend much time here. We have already talked about this yesterday. We have input activities, outputs. Eh? These are called implementation phase. Then outcome and impact, they are called result phase. But for all this, for all this, uh, you have indicators. Hmm? You can have indicators, maybe input, you have financial, uh, financial resources, human and material resources. Then uh, activities, these are tasks. Uh, task that personnel undertake a from input into output. Mm -hmm. These uh, activities are also called, sometimes called processes. Mm -hmm. Then output, these are tangible products of a program or project that are within the responsibility and control of the program or project. Mm -hmm. Then outcome, uh, these are results that are inflamed by the program intervention, but may be beyond the control of the program or project. 
So right now I'm teaching you how to how to, to do M and E. So as I'm teaching you how to do M and E, I will disturb you a little bit uh, on many things which are within my control. But later on in future, how you will become an, a good M and E expert in your different areas of or, or fields of work is outside my control. What I will have done is only to influence you so that in future you can be a good one. But it is outside my control. Mm -hmm. So impact or goal, this is the ultimate fundamental and sustainable changes uh, in conditions or well-being of the target population. Mm -hmm. Can be attributable to attributed to the number, to a number of factors or intervention. So what are we saying? We are saying that goals and impact, these are ultimate fundamental and sustainable changes in the condition of well-being of the target population. So as you are implementing a project, you are intending something for them. There's that ultimate fundamental and sustainable changes you want them to have. That's why yesterday when we were discussing these people, we were saying, can you also have uh, uh, negative uh, goals or impact? And I said, yes. You can now, but the negative impact should be side effect. It is not what you have intended. Basically, as a program, most of the program is, in, is intending to make the life of people better. The target population should be better. That means the impact should be positive one. But by accident, you can also have negative impact. I get the point. You can have negative impact. It is not by design, it is not what you intended, eh? but you find it's there. Then too, even this which you are calling positive impact, it may not necessarily be 100% attributable to your intervention. There can be other factors that have also contributed to it. Hmm? That's why we are saying here that it can be attributed to a number of factors and intervention. Eh? So if people's life have become better, don't begin to celebrate and boss around. That, ah, you see it is because of your intervention only. No, it may not necessarily be so. Yet there could be also be other factors that you are not aware of. Hmm? That could have also contributed, but this, uh, summatively, it has contributed to the positive impact you intended. So this is the result chain, uh, result chain, so levels of M and E efforts. Yeah? By the way, I'm trying to update my, my notes. So those who have my own notes, you may find things have changed. Yeah? <laughs> so things you might have changed. So uh, I also want to bring to your attention this. Definitely M and E also has challenges. Hmm? M and E has challenges. Yeah. But before I discuss with you the challenges, I want to I want to first hear from you. You know, I don't want to talk as if I'm in the in the shrine. Are you winning? Hello, are you winning? Hello, are you winning? Hello, my sister Winnie. Yes, sir. I hope the computer is not attending lecture on your behalf. No, sir. Hey, so what do you have to tell us, Winnie? About the M and E challenges. Yes. Um One of the oh, challenges. Yeah. One of the challenges could be improperly designed data collecting tools, mm -hmm. hindering the evaluation. Okay, good. You can have improperly designed tool. Okay, good. You want to add? Hey, Winnie, you have run away too soon. Eh? No. <laughs> And also you maybe yeah. poor reporting of the 
poor reporting of the program by the concerned people. So okay, for example, if someone is, yes, poor reporting in the, maybe the data collection so that the, all the data that is required is not collected. Mm. Okay, good. But it's related to the first one. Anyway, we are brainstorming. Uh, Alex, why be Alex? Why have you written your name Alex dot B? Why are you not writing in full? Eh? Alex. Hello, Alex B. Is this one YB? Yeah, it is Alex YB. Why have you not written your name in full? Hello, Alex. Alex. Alex, please. Oh, guys, I think many of you have left computers to learn on your behalf. You are like, let me trip the Pomona like this. Since you like to see us in class, let me leave the computer to be there for him. <laughs> Alex, please talk to us. Okay, uh, Asiki Rasul. Yes, Asiki. good afternoon. Good afternoon, how are you? Fine, thank you. I've seated on the table just to follow yeah. you. So, uh, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, we are looking at these challenges uh, that the M and E um, could be facing. Uh, mm. One of it, I could say, is the, the culture or the attitude of of we, like the way you brought in the aspect of model. It has changed us, but we are used to our culture, and we see it as a challenge. So instead of trying to adopt and change to it, we are looking as if it, it is coming to to, to, to us. waste our time or change whatever we know from before. Thank you so much. Very good, very good, uh, Rasul. Hmm? Very good. Namzala, Beatrice, and after that becomes Obera, Patrick, Amoti, you prepare. Namzala Beatrice, Watitwa. Hello, Namzala Beatrice, Watitwa. Are you present? Or oh, the computer is attending on your behalf. Hello, my sister Beatrice. Wow, that one is also a missed call. Eh? Become so better, Patrick. Hello, yes, Patrick. Dr. Yes, yes, Dr. Mon Can you add for us the challenges of M and E? By more the people conducting the monitoring in the to the people being uh, or the implementers of the project. Like when we relate these things to projects conducted by politicians, once the project is brought by a certain, for example, party, and it is being implemented for the benefit of the community, and if at all members of the opposite party come to maybe evaluate and check, then it is automatic that uh, they are biased and therefore may end up giving negative comments. Yes, you are right. You are very right. First of all, remember one of the core aspects of monitoring and evaluation is also learning. Uh, so it should not be for false finding. Uh, if it's for false finding, then people will resist it severely. Hmm? 
it should be for learning purpose so that people should learn and they continue to you know there's no perfect human being i hope you're aware about that so there's no perfect human being hmm? so we need to create in place uh, put in place a system that makes us to continue learning hmm? thank you so much becomes to bear uh Ruo romeo deo gracias yes yes stand up hello yes please mm. the air money challenges yes mm. i think one of them is also finance, financial constraint. Because we have to save like uh, for those big, big projects, so we need to travel, probably interact with people, uh, maybe those stakeholders, then the uh, beneficiaries. So at, at times it's not implemented well because they don't have enough funds to save and budget in, in, in any project, in any project. MNE also has a rich budget, rich budget allocation, which, uh, which, which is a lot at times. At times, like you see, maybe it's supposed to be done monthly, maybe monthly monitoring or probably quarterly. At times, they don't do it, they do it later. Like, for example, the after immunization, you see a team, maybe for ministry, supposed to go and do evaluation or monitoring on how the organization has, activity has gone. At times they take time. At times they come after three months, but at times they don't go at all because of those financial constraints. Yes, you are right. You are very right. We don't allocate enough funds for monitoring and evaluation. So it is a challenge. You are right. Thank you. Vicky, Vicky, you are supposed to name yourself correctly, but you have up to now, you see, you have not done. Are you still there? There's somebody called Vicky on me. Usama Peter, you have been there since yesterday and you have not talked. Can you tell us something? Yes, sir. Yes, Hello? yes please. Yeah, one of the challenges sometimes also will be related to staff may find um, you are supposed to do uh, monitoring in a place at the cost of um, maybe the work schedules or one person is not fine you find at the end of the day the work is not being done and affects you end up affecting the reports and in the evaluation part also sometimes you find the data is not insufficient enough to be really given out and also another thing will be finance uh, can also affect the processes also of the monitoring and evaluations. Thank you. Yes, human resource. Always you need to recruit enough human resource that can do monitoring and evaluation. They may not necessarily have to be expert in M and E, but if you build their capacity so that they know something to do with M and E, they, they become M and E oriented, the better. Thank you, Peter. I want to see somebody who has also not yet talked. Number Ruth, Number Ruth, you were talking other things the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yep, took so much now. So what do you have to send us? Eh? I was typing in the chat, uh, but I can say that uh, lack of uh, proper projection and forecasting during the evaluation can be a challenge yes, for M and E. Very good. When you have not projected well, it's a challenge. Eh? Maybe let me look at the last person. Aha, uh -huh. look yes. at Richard. Hello, Richard. Yes, Doctor. What do you yes, have to Doctor. Yeah, um, one other challenge that, um, monitoring and evaluation can face is in case there is um, incomplete uh, uh, data in that uh, during the time of implementation if data is not entered well uh, it becomes now a challenge 
for people to figure out um, the appropriate information. Also, there would also be a challenge of, um, in case the project does not reach its time of completion, there are some projects which start and maybe um, it has a time frame for uh, evaluation. So you find the time that was set for evaluation I don't know whether you're getting me. Hey, wait, 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 look, beggar. Ah, uh, Beatrice, you have disorganized us. Okay, look, beggar, you can proceed. You can continue now. <clears throat> Yes, I was looking at some projects which starts and in the due course they collapse before they reach the time frame for evaluation. So this becomes a challenge to have a proper evaluation done on these projects. Thank you. You know, that one is poor planning. Eh? When you have project that start and they don't finish. That Dr. Man, man, I have also something to say, sir. Yes, come, come. Uh, the challenge is I found while we are implementing this monitoring and evaluation. I ever worked for a certain project in right EC. Uh, you find where we find the, 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 the donor and the people who are implementing and monitoring and, and we are evaluating the project. Mm. We have different goals because when in our own program about the rule of 1990, they are interested in that side plan. Once you get a result where they find the whole clients you have tested are negative, they say, you man, the, the, the donor is going to stop the money. You, yeah. you, we are interested in more positive. Yeah. So it resulted in two manipulating the results which we bring and an error and you find it will affect the, the outcome. Yes, yes, that's the challenge. You are very right. That is called data fabrication. Hmm? People want to forge data that does not exist because they have different interests. Hmm? Kamukama, you are right. I saw some people's hand were up. Ali, your hand was up. Have you already lowered your hand? Mohammed Ali. Yes, doctor. Uh, good afternoon. This is Mohammed. Good afternoon. My Mine doesn't differ from Kamukama's one. Uh, it is just about, I think, uh, among the monitoring and evaluation projects that I have been, or I have uh, engaged myself in, there has been lack of focus in most cases. People, instead of focusing on an objective which you want to evaluate, others bring in other propaganda, as you said, as far as some things are so political. So instead of focusing on something which can use uh, your project and get to know some evaluation plans for the future. Some people just stay back and they just focus on different things that like just pleasing the, 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 the member of parliament, pleasing the donors. I think it was so at first. They also think about writing fake reports so that the sponsors can be easily enticed and uh, what you also come come and say. Uh, mm. Having negative, and then they say you can them to into positive. So sometimes people just lose focus. It's one of the challenges. Yes, I counter that as well. Thank you. You are right. You are right, Ali. L lack of focus. Good. Uh, I wanted uh, Kayaga Maurian to share with us there, and uh, we will have. Hey, some of you have already lowered your hand. Eh? Paul, your hand was up. Maybe over there, I've already addressed your concern. I don't know. Kayaga Maureen, you can share with us the experience from UK. No, doctor, the experience I'm sharing is from Uganda. Now, okay, I don't okay. know if this is, uh, this uh, is also under power planning because uh, yeah. you realize there are projects that uh, are set to begin, the M &E team comes in, but then mm. the approving team takes its time to start. For example, it can even take up to six months for the project to start running. So. 
the, by the time it starts, it's interrupting with the time schedules that were put up by the M and E team. So I think that is also a challenge I noticed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is related to poor planning. It is related to poor, but you don't have any experience from UK. <laughs> Not yet, <Yeah>? doctor. <laughs> yeah, we pray God to really keep you there. You are our ambassador there. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, doctor. Uh, we are proud of you. Uh, Okumunoa, yes, your arm is up. Hello. Yes, please. Yeah, I'll just uh, add on two issues concerning data, uh, mm. the falsification of data. You find uh, in some pro projects, maybe they are all after numbers. And uh, if they don't get the client, so that in some of these projects in circumcision, and uh, if they, they 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 realize few numbers, they go and escalate numbers. And when you see what is on the system and what is on the the data tools, the primary data tools, mm. they, the the figures are, are contrary. One is low and one is much higher, but to impress more more of the donors and not actually to have the real impact on ground. True, true, true. Okay, members, I think let's proceed. I will continue to look for people who have not yet talked. Yes, Lokot Paul, maybe you are the last one. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. So yes. uh, in, a, in a project monitoring and, um, and evaluation, Mm. Uh, that um, we have observed under the, the local government setting, you find that uh, some of the project monitors, uh, like the officials at the district level, may be having self interest mm -hmm. in, in certain projects. And uh, you even find that some of them are contractors themselves. Mm. And it becomes difficult for them to really uh, genuinely make proper assessment for these projects because mm. they already have a bias. They are the beneficiaries and uh, they may not be able to do things to, to standard because of fear to spoil uh, the names of their uh, of their farms, and uh, and also to be uh, implicated for having done shoddy work and so on. So you find that the monitoring and evaluation exercise uh, is not done according to the way it is supposed to be, because of self interests of the of the managers themselves who are supposed to supervise these projects. So that is another challenge that um, I see it is quite bogging down the ideal process of uh, monitoring and evaluation of uh, projects at these settings. Thank you. You are right, you are right. You see, those one which Paul is talking about, which Lokot, Lokot Paul is talking about, this, those are called enemies from within. The worst enemy you can ever have is somebody who is like you. Eh? Somebody who has known your system very well, has mastered the system, is highly knowledgeable, then the person turns out to be an enemy of the system. That is exactly what Lokot is talking about. People know all the things very well, but they have private interests. And they will never tell you that they have private interests. It's you to discover. Eh? Is you to discover that people have private interests. So, uh, yes, Cotias, is it a burning issue before we proceed? Yeah, it's not really burning, but I think it's uh, it's worth sharing. Yes. Um, I think um, we um, Uganda is mostly like donor saturated. and when you look at the way we do our M and E, a lot of it relies on uh, more of winning or getting more money 
than mm. actually reporting what is on the ground. To some extent that even the ones we call evidence-based data-driven interventions, sometimes you find maybe some things are escalated here and there for people maybe to win the second grant or the third grant. But when you go on the mm. ground, I know most of us are implementers also on the ground, like things like VMMC, things like, you know, those things. You find everything is inflated, just please the donor and we get um, maybe more funding. Right. Um, the other thing is about the levels uh, of uh, M and E. Uh, to some extent, I, I think very few people, a lot of people prefer do a lot of quantitative. The numbers, mm. very impressive graphs, which is fine. But we do less of qualitative to an extent of going to the beneficiaries and actually find out actually where the behavior that we intended to promote at a certain point are actually being practiced. And so you, you go in a, in a workshop and you see the presentations and sometimes you're coming from that very village or that very community, but what is being presented actually on the board is totally different from what people are practicing. So I think there is a, a deeper layer that is missing, especially when it comes to beneficiaries and the actual behavior changed person than actually what is being reported. That's my submission, thank you. You are right, you are very right. You know, okay, Alonda and Romeo, uh, Roy, I will come to you after we have discussed what I have. You will be the first, so you can keep, you remind me. Uh, I work with some organization, uh, in the past, I think we have married stock. Uh, in my early career, is a medical doctor. <clears throat> and we are responsible for doing what? Uh, uh, giving uh, family planning services to mothers. And for the role of a doctor, the major role of a doctor was to give the permanent method, vasectomy and, and tubal ligation. So, but of course they put you under severe tension. Eh? They tell you now, if you don't show record that you have done this, then how uh, oh, will they pay your salary? For how long will you be doing their, their, their work? So you must show that you are working and that, that means we have to forge some data. We forge data to the extent that sometimes we even feel ashamed. Eh? Say now, if these people are to analyze this thing critically, they will realize that we have already finished all the matters of reproductive age in these areas. All of them have had a tubal ligation. We are now on children. And probably we are even about to finish children. <laughs> I see. <laughs> so that's, and it haunted me a lot. Of course, I was not alone. The other people also felt haunted. Eh? But that's the directive that you are, your bosses give you. Eh? And they threaten you like that. So it, it becomes meaningless stuff. Eh? The way courtiers are saying, it becomes just to satisfy the, the, what? the NGOs, or the funders, or the donors. But when the donors come on the ground, sometimes they don't rely on those numbers of yours. They go qualitative. <laughs> they go to get feedback from the from the beneficiaries. Eh? And sometimes they may not even need your, your record. They just go randomly eh? using a different uh, strategy altogether and they can discover the rot in the system. Romeo and uh, the other one was and Alonda, you wait a bit after we have discussed this. Eh? So uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I had. One of the challenges is poor planning, the way we have already discussed. There is no doubt that is always better to plan for things than to, to, to forget about them when conducting an evaluation. You better plan. If you fail to plan for something, it is usually a result of poor, I mean, it, of course, it results in, it gives you poor results. So a uh, lack of planning can lead to lack of time being available to conduct evaluation, uh, lack of direction, 
as to the outcome you are hoping to achieve or lack of adequate resources, eh? uh, many other things for M and E. So that's what poor planning can do. We also have bad data. Somebody has already talked about data. Uh, data which is poorly collected, is not able to answer all the question or the objective that you are set to do something similar to that is also very bad or it is incomplete. Eh? So instead of having bad data, data that is incomplete, that does not answer objective, you better not have it at all. Eh? You better not have it. So if you must have, you must have quality data. Eh? Data which is complete, data which is sufficient, data which is uh, recorded on a particular area and precise. Mm -hmm. So we also have ineffective approaches. Eh? Ineffective approaches in m and &E can lead to lack of accurate data and inaccurate design for that matter. Eh? In, uh, in uh, ineffective approaches, I always, to some extent, it can also be due to poor planning or due to poor design. Hmm? <clears throat> Poorly designed evaluation can lead to inaccurate uh, data and misinterpretation of results. Hmm? So the design, uh, the design phase, you must be very careful and do a, a, a good job. Hmm? So sometimes we have also evaluation questions. When you do evaluation, at some point we will look at evaluation question. When you are to do evaluation, you set yourself the question that you are supposed to, you, uh, to guide, that is supposed to guide you. Hmm? So that, when those questions are badly crafted, when they are poorly crafted, then it is stifled to what? Uh, evaluation. Evaluation will not come out well. Okay? Bad question can be a major obstacle in M and E. Poorly crafted question can lead to inaccurate data and also skewed results. Okay? Poorly designed question can be too vague, can be too narrow, or contain loaded language or whatever it is. Okay? So for that matter, questions should be clear, concise, and unbiased. Somebody talked about politician taking interest in it. Okay? They go with biased mind, maybe an opposition or a government passion, the government, somebody who supports NRM can go with a bias to try to see that, to demonstrate that NRM is doing great, great work. Or somebody in opposition goes with a bias to try to demonstrate that they are doing nothing. Eh? So such kind of biases sometimes can be too bad, it, but it emanates from what? From badly crafted questions, evaluation questions. You also, yes, some organization, somebody talk of lack, lack of focus. Some organization also take M and E as a luxury. They are not just serious. Eh? They have this say, we already do good things. So why should we evaluate? And others will say evaluation is a waste of time. Eh? No one is paying, the, paying for impact evaluation, something with that short. So they take it as a luxury. They don't take it serious. Yeah. Yes, as we have already seen in the discussion by colleagues, lack of time and lack of resources. Anything that is valuable, you must plan for it. And you must what? Uh, you must prioritize and put some resources for it. So when you have not located resources for monitoring and evaluation, how will you implement it? Yeah. Even if you have good heart to implement, if the resources are not there for it, you cannot do much. Hmm? So another one is also called missing, missing theory of change driven data collection. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk to you about theory of change. Hmm? But let me first uh, explain this. So when you miss that logical linkage in your in your data collection or in the program you are doing, you are failing to link it up to the betterment of the, of the, of the target population. Then there you will also, you will not be able to craft good design. Hmm? So before you craft good design, there must be that kind of approach where there must be some theory that will guide you on how the life of a person can be made better. 
and then you begin to craft down or put down the paperwork and then begin to implement carefully what you have put down in the paperwork. And you will want to see the result in the target population that their life is better. Hmm? So in the absence of such a uh, theory, in the absence of such a uh, theory of change, it means you cannot do much. You are just doing it as ceremonially as a casual work. Eh? And because you are doing it as a casual work, it will not lead to the result. Eh? For example, you know, when uh, people fit well, eh? when people fit well, they become healthy, they become fat, uh, they, their productivity increases. So if you have a project that will uh, should enhance people feeding, if you don't have that theory at the back of your mind, it will disorganize, you will not uh, implement well. And people like, I mean, people will not become better. They will not become fat, they will not become healthy, and they will not become productive. Hmm? For you to make people become healthy, become productive, become fat, there must be that theory that should guide you, which is at the back of your mind. And what that theory, we call it theory of change. Hmm? We call it theory of change. So when you, your project is lacking, theory of change driven approach of data collection, then there will be some bit of weakness in the design. Mm -hmm. So we are saying that in most organization, data collection is either non-existent or the organization lack a robust strategy for collecting data. When they collect data, they, they usually focus mainly on activity and output data which is not aligned with or validated with the organization primary vision and mission. So even this objective that you said, ladies and gentlemen, be very careful about it. It must be uh, related to the mission and the vision of your organization. So the mission and the vision is you, that better future you want to have. And now if you want to have better future, then what should you do right now? that should lead to that better future. Hmm? Are you getting a lot of noise in my background? No. Not at all, sir, we're good. No. It is okay. Yes. I yes, want yes, you to yes, give yes, me sir. honest feedback, by the way. Yes, doctor, it is very good. It is okay, Dr. Mona, we should have okay, okay. online. line. <laughs> okay, there. Dr. Mona, before you proceed. Yes. I wanted to make a small inquiry about uh, something you just mentioned. Uh, about weight is getting fat something good that you do you know uh, ah. a device <laughs> yes uh, okay yeah sorry 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 i'm not saying that getting fat is good i'm using it as an example eh? of, of an outcome you would want to you may be interested in attaining you know, in the villages, when they are, you are fat, people believe that you are doing very well. <laughs> you have money. But not, not that necessarily being fat is a good thing that should be desired. Eh? <laughs> and sometimes even people get fat because of gene. Eh? Not because they are feeding well, but because they have that gene. <laughs> I get the point. So I'm sorry if I've misled you because of that example. Eh? It's okay. It's okay, Doctor. Doctor Mona, lastly, yes, yes. I, this this is diff slightly different from what we're discussing. My other colleagues are, are making a small inquiry mm. about uh about those who have supplementaries specifically. Yes. They are saying, are they supposed to do coursework again, or the marks they got are, are still valid? Eh, okay. I think. Let me answer. Uh, you remind me later on. It's okay. Doctor, I've sent you an email already about that. No, not an email. I'll talk in this class, but I want to first finish okay. what we are doing. Okay, thank you. Okay, but don't forget, you remind me before we close. Okay, sir. So, colleagues, this is basically what we have. I've already explained to you theory of change. The organization intended path to, uh, to impact this, explain, is explained by describing the causal connection, causal connection between an intervention and its, either its short-term uh, 
result or intermediate res uh, term result or long term result or outcome. So when you draw that connection, that causal connection between what you envision to have in the future, then what you should be doing right now, and you concentrate and increase energy on what you are doing right now, then what you are planning to have in future will come a reality. And that is the logic of the project. So that is how theory of change is very, very important. So in the absence of theory of change, now you cannot do much apart from maybe practicing witchcraft. Hmm? So a theory of change is a structured approach to, uh, to understanding the underlying assumption and objective of a program or project. It helps organization to identify, analyze, and assess the different component that can affect uh, change within their project. So I hope you can expand, expand a little more on this. Again, on theory of change, when we come to theory-based evaluation, I will explain to you a little more on that. How theory-based evaluation is also linked to theory of change. So it is that important. When you want to bring the change in the life of a person, there must be a theory that should guide you on how, if it is about health-seeking behaviors, you must have some bit of theory that guides you about how health seeking behaviors can be attained. Then you begin to design your project carefully along that theory. Hmm? So in the absence of that theory, you cannot improve the health seeking behaviors of people. You cannot. Eh? If you try to improve it, it will end up to, to naught. It will end up to nothing eh? in case you ever try to, to improve. It will not take you far. Hmm? So we also have lack of technical expertise. To some extent, there are some organizations that will also lack technical expertise and what have you. Uh, poor organizational culture. Uh -huh. This is also another one. You can have poor culture of the organization. They, they are just not interested in monitoring and evaluation, and that is all. So you cannot do any, any miracle. People are not interested, period. So you cannot force them. Hmm? Organizational culture, very, very important. Eh? If you have a M and E oriented culture in your organization, well and good. If you don't have, then you have some work to do. Hmm? Logical framework. Logical framework is also similar to theory of change. Eh? Logical framework is also similar to theory of change. So many organizations have well-developed programming, however, they, they never considered how to measure progress using the logical framework. We talked about logical framework when we were do, doing project planning and management. Hmm? So some of these tools, have, of course, we are also going to talk about these under tools for, for M and E. Some of the tools that you, you need to use. You have, we have already talked about M and E plan. You may also be interested in the logical framework. They, those are tools that can make your work better. But if you lack them, or if you are not into the habit of using them, then you cannot, they cannot help you. Hmm? Uh, lack of focus. I think this was uh, the quote Paul who talked about lack of focus. Yeah. Uh, lack of stakeholders' voice. Uh -huh. uh, I think Koti has talked about this. The stakeholders, all your key beneficiaries, if they don't have a voice in that, it also brings you to now. Even though you have the quantitative figures, very highly well plotted graphs. Eh? But if the voice of the stakeholders, and most especially the beneficiaries, if they are not seeing anything in it, then you are just treating your own psychology. So it is a challenge. So I have the following areas you can read at your private time. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is what I have. I want to see whether we have time, then we, I start on something to do with indicators. But before we go to indicators, uh, we can discuss a little bit. Uh, Dr. Mona, 
Yes, please. There, there was some submissions in the chat box. I don't know if you if you if you want to pass by to go there and check them. By who? I'm seeing many. Yeah, there are many. Uh, most of the colleagues, Ronald, I'm seeing second Nikisha Fiona. Let me see, um, let me is... see where it has started from. I think some of them was related to your challenges on Moodle. Others were just submissions. Many of them on the, on, the, on, the, on the challenges of M and E. Members were yes. just posting there. Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. I saw number of Ariat has posted uh, poor quality information, delays in, in implementation, lack of commitment, yes. Uh, Kalembe Duffin has posted poor planning. Uh, Kalembe Duffin, you had not talked. So now you have posted your concern here. Thank you so much. Kalembe Duffin, are you there? Hello, Kalembe Duffin. Hello, Daphne, are you there? Oh, I hope that is not a missed call. Ah, you are forgiven, my sister. Your network is too bad, you are forgiven. Daphne, you are forgiven, please. Your network, my dear. We are not hearing at all. And uh, not good at Dorian, inaccurate data. Yes. Uh, Nambi Ruth posted lack of resources necessary to conduct M and E. Yes. Uh, Paul Kirumira posted coming up with a conceptual framework, especially those indicators look to me as already a challenge. Yes, it needs expertise. You are right. It needs expertise. So if you don't have the expertise, it's a challenge. So Kotya is saying online is the way to go. Uh, no need to go to Harvard or lead university for masters, even graduation is online. Hey, I think this is related to your challenges with Moodle. Maybe it stops there. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Evelyn Atukunzire uh, Atuk has posted poor planning and use of inappropriate tools or method. Yeah, is correct. Uh, Kumono has posted longevity or period taken in a project can be one of the challenges. By the way, what Kumono has posted is if you have a manager, uh, who has negative attitude towards M and E, and the passion has been in the system for ages. Maybe you will pray that the passion should first leave the system or the passion dies, so that you begin to implement something. But when you have such a passion still there, you cannot do miracle. Hmm? There are some people who are really highly conservative. They are very rigid on what they have ever known in the past, and they, you cannot change them. So that's what longevity can do. A number of poor problem identification. Courtiers has posted a bottom approach assuming the community problems. Lockwood Powell has posted preconceived ideas of stakeholders uh, about individual interests of the team monitoring and evaluation and evaluating. Yeah, sometimes, of course, if those preconceived ideas are related to theory of change, then it's okay. But if they are also not guided by theory of change, then it is really bad. Hmm? Then it is bad. But uh, the one that is guided by theory of change, that one is okay. Yeah. Uh, Nachi Gude, Dorian poorly crafted question. We have talked about that. Alonda Kennedy, timing. Yes, we have talked about that. Uh, 
Nyamug is a glorious project hypothesis. Now, uh, glorious, you will explain this point. Project hypothesis, how? So, Semwanga Esther, lack of focus, uh, inadequate technical expertise, inadequate time and resource. Uh, Kemigisha Fiona, another challenge is ineffective approaches. Yes, good, we are going to look at all those. Uh, Nambi Ruth, again, lack of appropriate projection and forecasting during evaluation. Uh -huh. uh, Cortias, again, donor focus uh, monitoring. What is MRI uh, Cortias? Um, MRI is monitoring, reporting, and evaluation. Yeah, you know, there are many abbreviations. Eh? <laughs> so you cannot take everything obvious. Thank you. Uh, same one again. Lack of focus. I think most of them are similar. Apollot Julius. Interpreting the result of M and E can be challenging. Yes, it needs expertise. That one is related to expertise anyway. It is important to clearly communicate findings and recommendations to ensure that decisions are based on accurate and unbiased information. Yes. Nyamug is a glorious resource constraint data collection system, uh, changing, changing mindset among team members. Yes, yeah, some people's mindset are very fixed. Uh, Seguya Ronald, uh, incomplete data due to loss of loss to follow up or decline of some participant who had started another natural disaster such as disease outbreak, flood, yes, all this. I uh, have uh, Paul Kayebire has said varying reporting requirements from multiple donors. Yes, some donors, they might have different requirements for reporting, you are right. Okay, I think I cannot read all. Uh -huh. Eston Bamuleke has posted, during field visit, a lot of uncertainties uh, can occur. Uh -huh. Waromio, uh, Roy has posted unrealistic uh, set targets by Donald. <laughs> By the time you are setting target, we will talk about that. When you are setting target, you should be very careful. You set target which are realistic. Uh, Alex has posted lack of community involvement during problem identification. Uh, Rosa Julius has posted negative attitude towards a uh, project and its implementers. Aha, uh -huh, very good. So when you have those can be great challenges. So, uh, expensive M&E tool, of course, everything needs some resources. I cannot say they are expensive as such, but it's about prioritizing for the sake of the benefit of your business or your project. Uh, before we close the chapter for discussion, there were two hands up. I learned that your hand was up, and then who else? I've forgotten the second person. It was Roy. Eh? It was Roy. And Roy. Yes, so Alonda, can you come through? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, from the intro you've given us from yesterday and today, I look at M and E uh, and try to relate to quality improvement. Eh? Yes. Quality assurance, quality improvement. 
So I think the biggest challenge is um, getting the people being monitored and evaluated in line with the people doing the monitoring and evaluation. Like you said, this shouldn't be a, fa a fault finding, but uh, mm -hmm. it should be geared towards improving the project, like we're seeing, mm -hmm. assessing, then later evaluating, setting a goal and trying to see whether you're reaching that goal. So mm -hmm. having those people, the person doing the M&E and the person on whom the M&E is being done, having mm -hmm. them uh, like having the same kind of mindset eh, is usually very challenging in that, like you see the pressure projects have, they feel the donors are evaluating them, so they have to forge things. But if they were in the same line, like gearing towards the same, no one would be blaming the other for not achieving if we are reporting the same thing. So you find, even though the, the, the project runners, implementers know what to do in the M and E, they end up being doing wrong things because they are not in line with the other people who are in the end going to evaluate them. Then you know, also vice versa. So it, it kind of distorts the whole M and E business. People tend to take it like, like, like why do I want and evaluate? Yet we already know what we are going to present. <laughs> mm, because right. in the end, you have to present when you are achieving. So why mm. do the monitoring and evaluation in the waste time? So it kind of uh, yeah challenges the M and E business. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kennedy. Eh? Uh, what Kennedy has said, I want to bring to your attention. M and E is also what do we call it? Is a quality improvement process. The aim is to improve uh, on quality of what you are doing. So basically, of course, this one, I'm trying to reinforce what Kennedy has already said. Then the other, the second hand was Boromio. Boromio Roy, your hand was also up before we close the session for discussion. And uh, thank you, class, and everyone for the discussion. Yeah, of course, uh, some of the things that I wanted to talk about have already been mentioned, but however, I will still say that uh, M and E basically is the brain of almost, uh, or if not the brain, the heart of the brain. Yes. So I was saying, uh, without uh, every organization be able to invest in a good uh, M and E. Uh, this is whereby you are employing people who are technical uh, enough to to get for you the the you know the good data and be able to display it, and plus also the tools like I talked earlier maybe the tools are not expensive but uh, the organization have to prioritize because right now most of the things are the IT equipment you see they're spending a lot of money whether they're computers or I mean all the other equipment and the tools right from the register to the various tools that uh, is I mean is being used for for collecting the data and the people mm. are going to generate for the data have to be invested in. So I think uh, uh, I don't see the reason why an organization really should not be uh, taking a lot of interest in the money because it is, well, even when you're presenting to the donors, you should give them, I mean, good data so that you can be able to get more funding or something like that. So every organization should actually take m as something very serious in, you know, in the organization. And of course, for quality improvement, like they've talked about as well, it's part of it. So I think it's something that we, all of us should have keen interest in. Thank you. You're right. You're right. Thank you so much, Roy. So, uh, may and the last was some concern which was which came up that people who are doing supplementary must they be in this class or not? Eh? Not so. Hello, Doctor Mona. Yes, yes. Doctor Mona. Yeah. Uh, the, the the question was that um, since they already have coursework marks. Are they supposed to do coursework again, or the marks they have is, are still valid? Then, lastly, he mentioned they also said that there are those members who are very far from Kampala. Is it okay for them not to not to come for the physical lectures because again it's going to be very expensive? Others are in, in outside uh, in the neighboring countries, Congo, Kenya. Is it okay if they can uh, maybe? See how to uh, join the own the, the team which is outside Uganda and then have that lecture. No, they cannot join. Let me start with that one. They cannot join. They have to come. Uh, those one who have given them special consideration, there are only two, and they have sent in their interest before we started the program. 
That's why I've, I've actually planned for them. So if maybe your concern is coming right now, then it's outside my plan. Maybe I can plan for it next year or next time when I'm to have this thing. Okay? So if it is too abrupt, it disorganizes me and will also confuse me. So you have to come. Uh, and two, why you it may not be that too expensive as such? Eh? We are going to come over the weekend, eh? probably Saturdays and Sunday. But as I told you, when we come, we will compensate for all the lost hours. We'll try to stretch ourselves until we feel we are satisfied with what we must cover. Hmm? So this business of somebody has come, it is coming to for the passion, tell you the bus is leaving at five. Can I leave? I will tell you, no, don't leave. When we have reached 9 p.m., you tell me, ah, now I'm going this day. I will tell you, no, don't leave until we are fully satisfied and we have covered what we should. Yeah? That's basically how we are going to do it. And uh, of course, everything is a sacrifice. Yeah? The cost will be there, of course. Then uh, coming to whether your scores, previous scores you are doing supplementary, whether your previous scores are still valid. The answer is yes, they are very highly valid. You already have coursework marks. So the question is, should you now do this one? The answer is also yes, you must do. Then another question, why should you do this one? The answer is for your own personal advantage. And why I'm saying this is, of course, uh, it is not compulsory. I'm not forcing because you have your right, but I'm also a parent, as I told you. When it is not obvious that somebody who is doing supplementary will pass, it is uh, maybe like 90% confirmed that anybody doing supplementary on earth will pass. It is not like there's no theory like that. Hmm? So chances that you are doing supplementary, you can come, you do, and you fail. Eh? There's a class, by the way, eh? uh, a master's class, where the passion, I'm sorry that it was really my course unit. The passion, the first time the passion failed, eh? but his attendance was very irregular. So the passion got coursework marked very highly. Then the second uh, time, like the following year, the passion came back. And the passion was again very elusive, was not serious, uh, claimed that he already asked coursework mark and what have you. Me, I don't disturb. Only for me to finish compiling everything to find the passion who failed was the same passion. So he failed the second time. Now the third time, I also emphasize that please, even if you have supplementary, it costs you nothing to attend. Knowledge is not toxic. Come and attend and be there, plan for it. Hmm? And be there and you, it will do you good for you to sit for it once and pass and forget about it if, if you have chosen to do so. Again, the passion did not appear. But when the time for exam came, I saw the passion in the examination room. I was like, wow, people are really smart. Eh? To my greatest disappointment, when I marked only to find among the people who have failed, that passion was there. I was like, God, you have mercy for sure. Hmm? But I could not now say anything because we all have rights. So as I've told you, I'm a parent. I also feel it bad. It is, I take my joy in your success. And I tell you what I think is best for your advantage. And from my personal experience, when you attend, when you participate in all these processes, your personal ability is, en is enhanced. Your personal ability improves. Your knowledge uh, and skill uh, will be higher. And then your chances of passing increases. Hmm? I get the point. Your chances of passing final exam now increases. So it is from that experience that I always tell people who have supplementary, especially in my course unit, I tell them to attend. Like for example, this particular one, I mean, we have we already uh, I mean, reorganized the, the reading materials. Eh? They are not the same as what people of last year had. had yeah? 
So now in the event that you have also missed, and this beautiful discussion we have had, you have also missed them all. You come with your own knowledge, which you even don't have it at hand anyway, because you are also equally busy. And at the end of the day, now you find yourself failing the second time. Eh? Sometimes when you come complaining to me, I also feel bad. Eh? Is that okay, David? That's okay, Dr. Mona. Yeah, I'm just appealing. It is not mandate, it is not compulsory, but my humble appeal to all of you. I know it is inconveniencing, but you will appreciate me at a later stage. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, can we give ourselves another break then we come back? I hope I'm not overstretching you people. <laughs> no, a break is good. I think some lunch, then we get back. For, for how long? We come back at 2. 2.30. 2 30. One hour's lunch. Mm. Are you sure? Let's, let's, let's make it at least at 2 p.m. so that we shall have a number of time of also maybe like one hour or two hours depending. I so think excuse me. Up to, up to and then it will be too long. Yes. Excuse me, Dr. Amona. So we need yes. to find lunch. It should be one hour at least. Yes, Vicky. I have a question. Yes. What happens if someone, for example, gets a retake and then uh, does a supplementary, again, fails the supplementary, what happens to that person? Like what's the uh, way for one after that? When you get a retake for the first time, then you come and you stay in class, you do everything. If maybe the second time that you are sitting, you get a supplementary, then now you will have migrated from being a retake to a supplementary and you enjoy the privileges of being of doing a supplementary, which you will have the option of not attending class. You only come for exam, you will enjoy that privilege. If maybe uh, the third time, instead of passing, you have again got a retake, then you go back now to, to the state of a retake. And you have to do what somebody should do when the person has a retake. Is that okay, Vicky? Yes. Yeah, so that is the policy. But Vicky, you have also not named yourself all. I named myself. <laughs> you have named as Vicky on. The other name I named you know, it. You don't want no, I, I don't know why it keeps coming back, but I had named myself. Let me redo it again. We are seeing on the Vicky. <laughs> okay, colleagues, I think let's break for lunch. Eh? Derek. Yes, doctor. So we are coming back at two. Is that okay? Yes, doctor. Okay, members, I just wish you a nice lunch. Eh? Doctor, before we go. Eh. Uh, I think two may be too early for some people eh? who have to make the food. Eh? Yes. Are you sure? uh, just give us one hour, at least one hour. Right. It's only 30 minutes to two, so it's really short time. So many bachelors in the house, you don't know how to cook. <laughs> so Derek, what do you advise? Roy is first going to look for Chicomando and what? Yes, I have to first maybe go out to town and eat something and come back. Okay, colleagues. Maybe we we'll give an allowance of, at 2.15. Derek, what do you say? That is so fact. Derek, can we? Is it okay for two thirty, Derek? Yes, doctor. We can go by two thirty if it's okay with you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the time check now is one thirty. So let us converge at two thirty. I wish you nice appetite. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Man. Thank you, Tim.